jouw grootste dromen, Maria? Om een hockeyster te worden. Om in Nederlands auto te spelen. Oké, okay, dat is mijn grootste droom ook. <laughs> Ever since I was a kid, I had the dream of going to the Olympics. I started playing hockey when I was seven years old. I turned out to be talented. I was just playing for fun with my friends. And when I was 12, I swapped clubs. I started to play for a club that played in the highest league. That was the first time I got in touch with professional sports. And from a young age, I learned all kinds of things. To, in order uh, to get to the top. I learned that I had to cancel social events, cancel birthday parties, no alcohol, and to push my boundaries. I had to narrow my life and dedicate it to the sport. Because that is how you achieve your goals. That is how you make your dreams come true, right? So that's what I did. I listened blindly to what was being told to me. And I followed the orders I got. Like the moment I really wanted to go to the end of year gala of uh, my secondary school. But my coach persisted that I had to come to training. I was not allowed to go. So I did not go. When I was 18, I started to play for the Dutch national team. I was so excited, but at the same time, I wanted to push it even harder and be more strict on myself. Everything had to make way for that one goal. And my Olympic dream was within reach. I trained really hard, listened to what was being told, cancelled a lot of social events, and then I was selected for the Olympic squad. We went to Rio de Janeiro in 2016. We were top favorite. We made it to the final, but unfortunately, we lost against England. Despite this, this disappointment, I also had it, I did have achieved my dream of becoming an Olympian, and the things that I had done and the sacrifices I made had worked out. In 2018, we were preparing for the World Cup. It was then that something unexpected happened. I was not selected. I was so disappointed, I was in shock. I did not know what I, what I did wrong. After all the sacrifices I made and after all the hard work, I was not selected. And after some time of disappointment, something else uh, happened. I started to doubt the rules I blindly followed. Could I have performed better? Could I have enjoyed my life more, created a bigger life than just the life I was living as an athlete, and developed myself as a whole person? I think I could have, and I wanted to do things differently. At this point in time, something else happened. I started to doubt the environment I was in. I started to think critically about how things were going and if that's still how things should be. What were the norms within professional sport? And th do they still align with what I think is important? But on the other hand, I still had this other dream. I really wanted to go to the Olympics in Tokyo. So I had to get back into the system, but now with more awareness. I worked really hard again, listened to most of the rules, and did what, what I always had done. We went to the Olympics in Tokyo. We were top favorite for gold. We made it to the final, and we won gold. At this point, you would expect everybody to be happy. But that was not the case. More people like me were critical about how things were going. There were issues. Signs had been missed about uh, psychological safety and physical and mental well-being of the athlete. This was also the first time I would speak out about these topics within my hockey association. Although it cost me energy, it gave me even more strength because I came closer to my own beliefs and to what I think is important. I also started to think about other aspects in professional sport that had been the norm. Equal payment, for instance. There is a big difference in payment between men and women in hockey. And first I thought this was reasonable. 
Even me, as a young woman, got influenced by the general ideas about men and women in sport. Things that were told to me from a young age were, men are more attractive to watch, men are faster, men are stronger, men bring in more sponsor money, and more people are watching the men. And to be honest, I took this as the truth, without even doubting any of these reasons. I was not even thinking critically about why things were going like this. But then, a big sponsor came up to me and made me aware of the fact that um, men earn five to ten times more than women within hockey. Five to ten times more. That's crazy. They asked me if I want to participate in a campaign to create awareness about this issue. And at first, I felt scared because of my own beliefs and the beliefs other people have. So I wanted to get to know everything about it. I started reading books, interviews, news, research, everything I could get my hands on. And that's the moment my astonishment and frustration grew bigger and bigger. I felt the injustice more and more. I did not even know about the history of women or the history of women in sports. But what I do know now is, we came late to the party. 120 years ago, we were not even allowed to participate in sport. That's not that long ago. So, I felt encouraged by this information. And I felt a responsibility to really do something. I took part in this campaign. And at the same time, I started to have conf conversations with the board of my club. They agreed that there should be a plan for upcoming years to close the payment gap. This was four years ago. Two years ago, they bought five international players for the men's team, while our team was filled up with talented youth. And I can tell you, international players are expensive. And instead of putting this money into closing the gap, their policy stayed the same. So I went back to the board and I talked to them again but without any short-term results or big changes. So what could I do? Obviously, it felt frustrating, and it felt like I had to convince so many people with long-held beliefs that had done things for so many years. So I had to take it to a bigger platform. I used my Instagram account with 40,000 followers, and I posted a letter about this issue. I asked clubs, the hockey association, and sponsors to really take actions instead of empty words. And this is when everything exploded. The post got thousands of likes and it got reposted countless times. People and media were jumping on it. I got a lot of positive reactions and I felt encouraged and supported. But there was not only good news. My club was not happy, and they felt like I've put them in bad publicity. <laughs> I could see where they're coming from. And, and I surprised them with this action. But I felt like this issue should be higher on the agenda, not only at my club, especially at other clubs. My club is willing, and I see them trying. The subject is a conversation at the table now. And a lot of people tell me that closing the gap takes time. But last year's report stated that the payment gap only grew bigger. So it should not be an excuse to not, to not do everything we can as fast as we can. I, <laughs> I talked again to the board, and they promised me that there will be a plan to divide the payments 50-50. And I'm really happy for that, and I see that they're willing. However, in general, we need more specific plans within clubs. We need rules from the Hockey Association, but now they're keeping their hands off it. And we need yearly reports and numbers to see the progress and the transparency. We need real actions, real plans and real change. Um, a few weeks ago, Claudia Golden won the Nobel Prize on economics on this subject. Despite more awareness, more conversations and more research, there's still a lot to do. 
Breaking barriers will always cause resistance. It is common for people to prefer things to stay the same. Be people simply do not like change. Not only in the aspect of sport, but in all aspects of life. No matter the field you work in, don't take things as a standard truth, just because you learned it that way. Be aware of your blind spots, not only in your own vision, also in your systems and your organizations. Be curious, challenge your own beliefs, challenge the status quo, and if needed, find the voice, find the courage to raise your voice. Thank you.